What's going on everybody? This is Cool Simon Sky and this will be System Test 12 for the ESL 1500 series. Now to start off, I like to say I actually cleaned up the spare room a bit. It used to have all these Christmas stuff lying on the floor. It was just clattered where I just could barely get to the panel. So it's all cleaned up and I put on the other side of the of the basement, which is wet right down there. And also it is snowing outside or was snowing outside. As you can tell. Also, I have made some changes to the system, so we're going to go ahead and open up the panel. As you can tell, I actually changed the NAC wiring from Class A to Class B, and uh, there's also NAC 2 in the circuit, which will be used sometimes, and I'll explain why in a few moments. And same with why I chose Class A to Class B, or why I swapped over to Class A to Class B. So that's the side of the panel and also I changed the wiring a bit on this booster panel. Now let me explain about this booster panel a little bit. So what, the, what these dip switches do is that it allows you to, to control how you want your inputs to work and how you want them to control the output. So for example, you can have input 1 controlling all the outputs and you can have input 2 to do absolutely nothing. However, input 1 is being controlled by NAC1 in the host panel or the ESL panel. And I have input 2 being controlled by NAC2 on the ESL panel. So how I have to set up the to or how I have this set up is that input 1 is actually controlling output 1 and 2, and input 2 is controlling output 3 and 4. However, only using output 1 and 3, uh, output 2 and 4 have resistors, which means we are not using them. So that's it about these panels. So right next to the panel, we have a Simplex T-Bar. This is a Simplex 2099-9756 dual action pull station. I have used this pull station many times on previous system tests, so it's nothing too special. However, we do have an addition to the system, which I won't be using as much, just like I won't be using that too as much, but I got a new device in my collection. This is a Simplex 4905-9938 Smart Sync Control Module. Now what this Smart Sync Control Module allows you to do is that you can have sync horns and sync strobes on your system. And it's mostly compatible with stuff that are Smart Sync or I guess selectable or whatever you want to call it. So what Natkin does, it controls the strobe and for the horn control, it controls the horns. And like I said, this only works with smart sync devices. I'm pretty sure it may work with other devices that sync, for example, like Wheelock and maybe Simplex 4903s. And also what these diff switches do is they can change the horn code and whether if you want master sync or slave sync. But you can tell I have it on slave sync for now. And for the horn control I or horn coding, it is actually set to continuous, but you can either set them to march time or code 3. Now you might be asking why I'm using a Simplex Smart Sync Control Module on my system. Well, that's because, bam, this is a Simplex 4906-9127 Smart Sync Truller Horn Strobe. Yes, I have this truller and I have another Simplex 4906-9127 Truller Horn Strobe in both my bedroom and the spare room. I actually got these two and the Smart Sync Module in a trade with the, I did with Mr. Truller. I actually gave him a Simplex 4050 and a 4401, and to be honest, I'm actually happy that I actually got these got these three devices added to my collection. And because I have the SmartSync module, I can actually use these True Alerts on my system. And if I didn't have the SmartSync control module, I can't use them anyway because, like I said, they are only SmartSync compatible. But these these aren't the only devices I actually got from Mr. Truler. He actually gave me a few devices, which you guys will see and another system test but I'm actually just gonna be doing this one system test for now because well I got a lot of plans ahead of me in real life because I have school but I'm just gonna get this system test over with right here is another simplex 2999 and I'm not gonna go over the detectors because they are all still the same right here this is a near tone 73303 pulse station I know this isn't in the simplex device and there is another pulse station on a system that isn't simplex as well. Now, the devices that Mr. Truler gave me, I was actually going to use on this system test, but I've read that I cannot use other devices that do not have SmartSync. For example, I can't use Edwards or older stuff on 
the SmartSync module because it could do could damage the device or the SmartSync module themselves. In here, I actually cleaned up the workbench a bit. There is not a whole pile of junk over here. This is actually just alarm stuff and exit sign stuff. That's pretty much it. And there's a dirty ZNS, which I have no use for. Right here, this is a Simplex 425120. I almost forgot the model number. <laughs> and we have a Simplex 4903-9252 15 Candela horn strobe. I just learned that these devices are actually selectable, meaning you can, mean the strobe can be free run or smart sync. And of course it is set to smart sync. Up here I just have a random ESD Genesis, but it's not really hooked up. And as I said earlier, I can't have this device hooked up to the smart sync module or else it would damage the module or the device itself. And in here I have another of the same thing, another Simplex 49 to 52 there's a pole station which I have never used on my system yet. It is an Edwards 278B1120 and there is actually brake glass which I'm actually going to be breaking for the system test. So that is all the initiating devices and the alarms connected to my system. So the 4903 horn strobes are actually on continuous because they cannot be controlled by the SmartSync module. And also the Truist will do code 3 but we're actually going to put the system on walk test. We're going to kind of do what I did on system test 2, where I just put all the zones on walk test. And hopefully zone 4 and 5 will do okay. So, and I do have my magnet as well. Thankfully I found it. So we're going to go ahead and activate the pulse station first. If you suffer from epilepsy due to flashing strobe lights, please do not watch and also do not pull any public fire alarms unless there's an actual emergency. So that is zone one and there's the smoke detector. That is zone two smoke detector. Now uh, I do need my screwdriver, but we're actually gonna take care of the smoke detector over here. Test it. And I do have my flathead screwdriver because this does not take a key to reset it. Zone 4 and zone 5. Now the reason they kind of skip like that because these horns you cannot sync up with the sync module. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and test the last pull station, and we're actually gonna pull this. So I'm gonna actually gonna key activate this one, and then we'll actually pull it as we put it in full alarm. Uh, let's see if I find my keys. There we there it is. Victor, no, wait a minute. There we go. I am aware that the back box is loose. So we're gonna go ahead and end it off the system test by pulling the Edwards 278 and there is actually a brake glass inside. So we're actually, and before we actually pull, I'm gonna put these true alerts on continuous. And we do that, just kind of flip one of the tip switches. There we go. Looks good. Alright. So there is a glass rod in here and I'm just going to go ahead and break it. So 
three, two, one. Hold on. Alright, so just gonna reset it here. There's the brake glass, so let's put it there for now. There we go. Let's go ahead and reset it. And that will be it for System Test 12. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and also subscribe for more YouTube videos on my channel. So um, anyway guys, thank you all for watching and see you guys in the next video. Peace. Let's make sure I have the right, I just dropped my keys. I'm going to be sure I have the right key when I go ahead and reset it. Okay, here we go. We got it.